today. Kabi's been beating people that mm -hmm. probably none of us would really expect Kabi to be beating. There's no disrespect to the guy. It's just there's other names here that we just kind of expect to get further, man. We've just been seeing them more consistent. Kabi's the top eight winner side for a reason today. But, man, you got to go against Sharp on Sheik Week. Good luck. Yeah, Sheik Week has been putting in effort, you know, bro, multiple times getting top eights. Another one right here. This one with some money on the line and for a good cause. We'll talk about that more as it goes on. Sheik, one of those characters with that speed that can just box with Hero over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Kabi's going to find a way to kind of dial, uh, dial in their attacks and deal with the pressure from Sheik. Because, again, like, Hero's got some good moves, but he's not necessarily very quick. So, and his Sharp's movement, honestly, is on point with any character he plays. And then when you take this character, Sheik, who's faster than lightning, it feels like, just try to navigate your way through that mess. I mean, good luck, dude. This could be yeah. tough. Even with all that frame data, right? Like, you could get the damage on, but then you get those random burst fast options. I mean, every time you get hit by a hero aerial, you feel like you shouldn't have. You feel stupid afterwards. But you get hit by Sheik off stage like that, you better be ready to tech. Yeah, he almost made it back to the ledge, but fortunately, I mean, just a little too low, not gonna be able to get it to happen. Throw it in the whack in the wrong place, dude. This is what happens when you have pressure, like, building up on you. You start throwing out some crazy options, maybe in the wrong direction, because maybe you're getting a little bit nervous, or maybe you're just trying to call things out before they ever even happen. And just look at this, man. Shark just continues to put it down. Yeah, I think one of the big things that Kabi's gonna have to focus on is using those buffs, using side Bs, using Kaboom, I hate that move. It's so big, it's so strong, and Accelerate is one of the few quick first options you see right here. Now Psych Up first as well. I per I respect what Sharp did, ran to the other side of the stage, said, hell no, you come over here to me. I mean, yeah, I mean, right now, just, if you can find your way in, great. But, like, <laughs> with, with Umban, like, you just do not want to get hit. Don't hold shield, just take the hit sometimes, because it's probably better that way. Yeah, honestly, like, it's, it really is just, it's all about damage awareness. And the way that Sharp has been able to just extend this stock with the kill power on, uh, on Hero, doing a great job. Side B is such a quick kill option, too, so you know that's going to show up some point. Bouncing Fish, though, off the up tilt at the ledge. That's another great one, too. Man, wow, dude, Sharp's pressure right now and just conversions into all these combos, getting up this damage is actually really insane. Like, you can see, like, just firsthand how Kabi is struggling here. He's not at, um, you know, risk of losing a stock, not to a bouncing fish at 40. Oh, my God, he was going for it all, man. He was trying to end that stock. That could have been beautiful. I respect it, man. You're looking deep for those meta few plays. And one of those things you want to do if your stock's up like that, especially against a character who doesn't hit you on the hitbox except for underneath, go ahead, try to spike him. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh. Okay, there we go. Yeah, both these guys kind of dancing around here. Kabi, you can definitely tell, is struggling with this pressure. But, man, the pressure is insurmountable. Not able to, you know, to find a way around it. And we're going to see Sharp actually get a really solid two-stock. Probably could have been a three-stock, to be honest. Yeah, honestly, it very could, much could have been a three-stock. And this is one of the first people all day who's really just kind of stamped, like, some type of fear into Kabi, right? And mm -hmm. that matchup reminded me a lot of how Sheik used to approach Ike in Smash 4. Slower hitbox aerials, kind of hard to really deal with you out of shield. So what does Sheik do? Overwhelms you with, like, so much pressure that you can't do anything. And I, I think Kabi did great against Spargo with that, against Goblin with that, but you couldn't do it against Sheik. Yeah, I mean... We'll see how Kabi's gonna, you know, dance around this as we move forward. Right now, it definitely is looking rough. I don't know if Kabi has any other characters. In fact, I'm actually gonna check that out real quick just to kind of see if, you know, maybe we can get a look into what else is in. Okay, looks like he's gonna be sick with Hero anyway, but I do wanna see if he has any other characters. And it looks like he does have a Pokemon trainer. That's his most played character after Hero, but like, it's Hero all day. And it might just, yeah. might just be seeing that the entire time here. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that Hero does still have going for him is that KO power, like we mentioned before. You got Kaboom, you got the side Bs, you have the buffs. So it's basically just about attacking where you think Sharp's going to go versus when Sharp is up against Shield. It's just getting away from Sharp when you can. And you see right now, he's trying to be a bit more aggressive with those preemptive hitboxes, those jump forward airs, just to try and get some fear into Sharp. Right. And there we go. Looks like Kabi's starting to find a way to deal with this pressure a little bit more. He's taking his time, he's holding Shield a little bit more often, and, oh, man, I, I want to say that it was definitely working out here, but Sharp is, uh, Sharp adapts on the fly, man. Like, mid-match, he will find yep. ways to turn things around. So you got to make sure, like, if you're adapting, you got to make sure that that stays a consistent factor in your game. Because Sharp will expose you as fast as he can. Yeah, that's it. Like, that's that top-tier gap. When you're sitting there playing, and you can, you can make an adjustment. But as soon as somebody else figures it out, you better be quick and ready to change that mix-up. Because mm -hmm. after what was happening before, where Sharp started off getting hit a few times, look what Sharp is doing now. It's like, all right. 
I'm gonna wait for you to press the button first because after you have already swung, you're gonna be in enough hits. To, uh, you're gonna be enough end lag that I can just run in, or oh. you just run up on me like that and just kill it. Dash attack at 85 after the hit. Yeah, that's rough. I mean, Sharp, you could tell, definitely tell Sharp was trying to wait it out like it was an Arsene meter or something. But yeah. the problem is, it's just like, Kavi was just waiting. Like, he was waiting, he's being patient, and just found a good opening to just finally, to, you know, dash attack in. It just worked out. So great stuff. Having a solid lead here and continuing to build up this damage as well. 49% is nothing to laugh at. We're going to see if Sharp can find a way to close this stock out. I mean, she can struggle to kill here. Sharp's been usually pretty good about it, but how good can he turn this around? I think a big thing that uh, Kabi's going to want to keep doing here is just trade. You want to extend this damage as much as possible. Or don't even bother. Just catch that anti-air up tilt. We were talking before about how much pressure that Sharp had. But now that Sharp is forced to actually go in to get that lead back, Kabi's just blowing him up consistently. Ooh, okay. Or there we go. Sharp that. waking up. Yep, just a little bit, getting that bouncing fish to close off that stock. But still, is it too little too late? Two stocks to one? I mean, the amount of times that Kabi has gotten oomph or psych up is actually ridiculous. Yeah, oh my god, that quick conversions. And that Ooh. forces the high, that was smart. Put out the neutral beat to force the early bouncing fish to catch him on the landing. Now looking at 81%. I don't know, Skip. This this game is looking like one of those you just want to put in a bag. I'm not one to normally doubt sharp early, but this one this one might be one of them. It might be. 81% is a tough answer, especially when you're on your last stock and your opponent's on their second. Only 33% right now. Like, sharp's basically got to get maybe like a little bit of cheese or something. Uh, but it's it's got to come out quick. You can't be allowing this match to go further because the further it goes, like the more possibilities that Kabi has for some really crazy RNG that just closes this game out immediately to even things up one apiece. I mean, speaking of cheese, how you want it? Cheddar, Swiss? American, it don't matter because all the RNG goes towards Hero, right? So for Sharp, you have to oh. get there. You go get some hanging out a little bit too long at the ledge, catches the board smash, and now we're at a window where Sharp could possibly get a nice edge guard. Yeah, I mean, right here, I think Sharp, oh, Sharp needs to be putting it down as much pressure as possible because you're just going to allow uh, Kabi to get all these like big buffs, like oomph, psycho, right there. Look at all this, look at all this happening. Constantly getting beat out over and over again on the air dodges. Kabi can't touch the ground. Oh, oh he shield! He what got the, the hell! <laughs> Dude, he got the shield poke on the first swing and then came around. I don't know if Sharp was trying to act out of shield, but either way, he was either gonna get the shield break or like the shield poke. I mean, Sharp was just dead there. That was insane. Yo, Kabi, this is the tease we're talking about, man. <laughs> oh. You know when you're at Olive Garden and you're asking, you know, they come up and say, hey, do you want a little bit of cheese? And you, say, you know, just enough coffee. He's like, no, keep it going. Keep it going. I need some more. How did that hit on the right to get it that oh, low man. to get that shield poke on the left? That's one of those know. moments where you take this controller and you throw it across the room. But Sharp, <laughs> Sharp's a hard competitor. That was one where Sharp is bringing it back after being down three to one. So... After what we were saying, like, I was one of the early doubters of that match. I thought that was going to Kabi's favor no matter what. And then Sharp started bringing it back. Hopefully Sharp can put that in his back pocket and just go clear headed into this next match. So, uh, okay, so I'm looking at the hitboxes here. There is no mm -hmm. hitbox behind Hero for that first swing. But, like, there's a small hitbox basically at his the lower half of his body. So that, with the, with the psych up, is actually what did that much shield damage. That's crazy. The weak hit. That's insane. That's oh, my gosh. Man, it's really and good it crit that too, God, man. Huh? It crit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you got to do here uh, now as Sharp? You got the, you got PS2 again. You have plenty of room to work with, and you still feel pretty comfortable at how you made that comeback, right? So one of the things that I think that Sharp's going to be looking for consistently is the same ledge trap game you got in the last one. Kabi could not deal with it when he was stuck there. Yeah. Well, I think the big thing was uh, one of the reasons was that Kabi was taking their time, you know, just being a little bit patient, right? Mm -hmm. And then they had that one psych up play where they just ran in dash attack and Sharp, like, Sharp got lax, like, very, very lazy for, like, a split second. And then from there, it was just playing catch up. And when you're trying to play catch up against a hero and it's a hero who knows what they're doing, it, it could feel like a really tough time because he's throwing out all these spells, he's getting all these buffs, and he just, they punish you for, you know, not playing against hero the way you're supposed to be playing against hero. So Sharp started doing that at the end. It was just too little, too late. And with literally a little bit of RNG to help things uh, out just a little bit so we'll see if sharp can keep that pressure down and right now looking pretty good here uh i mean percentages are pretty close but it should be better in the long run yeah, but it's actually been staying pretty even here, too. It seems like both of them kind of got a game plan. That is consistency of Sharp's game plan. You're going to be winning off stage. You got to catch those nears. And one of the things that Sharp consistently keeps doing is just catching those early jumps. And Kabi has been changing it up, too. It's not like Kabi hasn't changed it up. That was a nice mix up. You're going to be looking for a ledge trap again. There you go. Gets another solid edge guard. Those early air dodges consistently just keep getting hit. 
Oh, man, look at this, dude. He's just like, dude, you're not coming back to the stage. Oh, okay, definitely looking to see. Great zoom, just being able to get back to stage at least in some way, shape, or form. If you can't recover the ledge, just recover to the other side of the stage. Simple as that, right? Yeah, true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dip, run, get, get out fast in a hurry. Oh, you better watch out. Gonna go to sleep. Glass Mike, that stock. Unfortunately, not gonna die just yet in favor of... Uh, oh, that's something Sharp likes to do, too. Go off there, go for the vanish, catch that early up BKO. Oh, right. well, you're gonna catch this fireball first, man. Dude, right. Kami just throwing that right out there. I mean, still at risk of losing a second stock very soon anyway. Sharp usually answers back pretty fast. Oh, great tech, though. I mean, hey, luckily, a good thing for Kabi is if Sharp can't force him off the ledge again, all you gotta do is get about 40% in a buff, and the game's back to even. So you see Kabi just kind of putting down, like, a lot of option coverage, just putting out swings preemptively, but Sharp is already adjusting again. And as soon as he realizes that Kabi likes to chill and just put hitboxes out on approach, he doesn't move. Right. Okay. Oh, trying to go for a grab. Not going to get anything else out of that. And all of a sudden, it's Sharp's turn. It's that quick, man. All of a sudden, you, you could have the advantage. But if you're not capitalizing on it, uh, onto it, Sharp's going to find a way to turn this around immediately. And there we go. There's that down smash right at the ledge. Going to catch Kabi just doing a neutral get up. Over and over catching Kabi. Either hanging on the ledge too long on neutral get up. Like, he's been winning the ledge trap war over and over. And, I mean, I don't blame him. You do not want to be fighting this character center stage. Especially with options like that. Kaboom is so strong. Strong. And even though it would have KO there, it would have put the Sharp so deep off stage. That neutral beat is so massive too. It's actually doing a solid job of checking Sharp. Yeah, it's a relatively an even game. Like, let's be honest here. Like, yeah. a, a, a crit. I mean, not even a crit. Just honestly, any Sebastian attack can really put this away. But just like a flurry of moves, a forward air is gonna be able to put that away. All of a sudden, even stocks. Not necessarily even percentages, but like, this is dangerous, man. Oh, he's going for it all. <laughs> Yeah, and I was actually, I went to double check on that too, because uh, look at that air dodge constantly getting hit. That time holding onto the jump, but even though Sharp just reacts every mm -hmm. single time, and now you gotta up be high again. Look at the massive damage. Like, even though Sh Sheik may not put on like a lot of damage off of one interaction, if you keep winning them, it don't matter. Just like that. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, that wasn't a zero to death because he had 9%, but it may as well have been one. Like, he just, yeah. just Kami couldn't touch him, dude. Sharp just kept that pressure on. He, the only way he was able to get back to stage, honestly, is because he had Zoom come up. He got a little bit lucky there. Like, other than that, like, you're dead. And obviously, that was the case. Sharp cleaning it up, taking that game, uh, game three, excuse me. Yeah, and that's, honestly, that's, this is one of those matchups where usually Hero can feel pretty comfortable just kind of, like, looking for Zoom off stage because when you get push further like far enough i guess it increases the chances when you're off stage so you can't do that in front of sheik because sheik will go down there with you and just eat you up and mm -hmm. honestly like i am so impressed by the way that sharp continues to just destroy the ledge dropping game i know we've talked about it a few times throughout this match but it really is the telltale difference because you're eliminating any chance that kabi has to actually get any type of buffs up because he's too busy trying to get back to stage mm -hmm. man uh wow I guess we'll see what happens in this is game four, though. I mean, right now, Kabi's answered back pretty strongly at least once. But mm -hmm. can he do it a second time? Especially when Sharp is able to answer back the way he did. Like, you got to show that, you know, you got to show us. You got to show the viewers that, you I mean, you're not out of this yet. And I mean, yeah. I, I would like to believe that Kabi's still in this. But I mean, we'll see, man. Sharp, like... Well, I mean, you talked I, about it earlier. Sharp, Sharp is like king consistency sometimes, man. True enough. Uh, just a, a through and through fundamentally sound player. And this Sheik has always been one of those characters that kind of just shows it so well. But also, like, I, I still got some faith in Kabi just because this man did beat Spargo, did beat Goblin, did beat... Uh, there was one other player along the way here, too. Like, oh, uh, Rivers. So, like, just taking out three names like that is not an easy feat and sharp here has just been overwhelming him to the point where he can't play but i think if Kabi can hold center stage a bit better kind of like what he's trying to do right now i think he's got a shot right oh wow what a big opening man and you see like it was a good combo it did a good amount of damage but like that hit sound right mm -hmm. it's got like the r set effect you hear that hit sound and you're just like oh, oh my god oh. you're dead aren't you you're dead aren't you yeah fair and oh. balanced <laughs> I was, I was just trying to say, like, that down air sound, like, at, that's a sound that just breaks your heart. But you know what breaks your heart even worse? A shield break, man. That was super unfortunate. That back air is super strong. People need to pay attention to how strong that move is. And when he's got, like, psych up or loop on there, you just do just either let it hit you or just get out of the way. 
Exactly. That the key point right there, the buffs, having that I believe it's psych up that increases the shield damage. So you're sitting there thinking you're safe. And we've seen it a few times now where people chill out on the platform, get caught by that back air, and it just deletes the stocks. And it's just one of those situations where you thought you got caught, you know, outplaying them and then you just get blown up. Mm -hmm. Oh, what was that? I he did, no he did a hocus pocus, didn't he? I I've Man's just trying to roll the dice here, just drop out the Hocus Pocus. I swear, if we see a giant playing here, or if we get a Hocus Pocus Kamikaze, I'm, I'm losing it. <laughs> if we see a giant play, we just gotta start talking like we are giants. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, here we go. Get to Dip. the second step. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god. <laughs> never, never stay near Hero after they hit you with that neutral B because your shield is super low. They will absolutely try and destroy it afterwards. We've already seen a couple shield breaks so far in this set. Oh, man. Talk about, never mind shield breaks. Let's talk about just getting straight up bodied across the stage. Sharp putting down 50%, just not allowing Kabi to play the game. That seems to be a common factor here. A common a common current in this set is that Kabi's just not allowed to play. Whoa. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Dude, Kabi oh, just really goes for these plays, man. It looked like Kabi was almost trying to like, like big brain something, just hard read a spot dodge and get the buff. Man, you're dead. Great call on the tech, uh, on the miss tech, just covering it there with that up smash. This is still in business for Sharp. I don't know what the hell you're doing with that one. Sharp's I, on the other side. Listen, sometimes you just throw out Hatchet Man, you know, maybe and just hope for the best. Unfortunately, he didn't get it that time, but you know what, sometimes players just run into it. You see this, you see the Hatchet Man like start up and the player just goes, oh man, I don't want to hit get, uh, get hit by that. And they just run into it anyway. <laughs> I mean, true enough, there was the Hatchet Man heard around the world very recently that uh, oh, who was, who oh, was it? Guy? Was it was Wadi, right? No, 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 it was the Japanese tournament. Oh, yeah, 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 that yeah, one. Yeah, and Zach, right? Yeah, yeah, who, who yeah. hit Zachary with that. So sometimes it does work. Well, against a fast character like this, I don't know. It's you has got to be super careful. You see Sharp playing very safe. However, I'm still scared. I'm still scared. Oh, <laughs> We've seen Kabi snipe some really stocks. Oh, that's going to... No, he's going to live. Okay, great DI, 155, though. I mean, you got Kabi at 82%. He has, like, no mana left. Yep, that's going to be it right there. Sharp cleaning that off. He says, I'm done with this hero. I want to see you no more. Sending him to the sky and to loser's bracket as well. You know, there was a time where I would see needles into up smash, and I would have lost my mind. I mean, I would have gotten upset, but now, chef's kiss. That was such a great way to just catch <laughs> Kabi off the ledge. He hasn't done it a single time off ledge yet, so you're sleeping.